Somebody's believing for a miracle from God. Well, today is your day. Because God's word is true yesterday, today, today, and forever. And God's word will never change for anything, for anyone. And I'm going to tell you something. He said in Isaiah 53, 5, that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. God wants to hear you everywhere you heard, everywhere you heard. God will see you through, he'll take your pain away. God wants to hear you everywhere you hurt, everywhere you hurt. God will see you through. He'll take the pain no way. God shall provide for you. See with each and every day. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. I need you right away. God shall provide for you. Lift up those hands and say, Lord, I need you. I need you right away. God wants to hear you everywhere you 
to change our lives mm -hmm. you know and that and that and just healing of the body is just a benefit it's just like icing on the cake just you know? but yeah. God wants to give you abundant life so abundant life mm -hmm. is 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 a life where uh, void of the devil killing stealing and destroying that's that's what I describe abundant life as so guys that's that's what we want to minister to you all concerning. Um, we, well, we welcome you again to Higher Place Church today. This is Loving You to the Truth broadcast. We call it Loving You to the Truth because we kind of uh, are told we, we, uh, we preach some hard things. So we try to do it in the most loving way possible. <laughs> so that's why we call it Loving You to the Truth. God, because you know what, Jesus is both grace and truth oh, yeah, together. Yeah. He was the perfect, uh, uh, he was the epitome of both grace and truth. But I want to tell you guys real quickly, uh, before Angelo gets started, how you can be a part of Higher Place Church online. Mm. Guys, we didn't choose to have a online church, so I want to say that. Correct. You know, we really, uh, really, really miss uh, people sometimes, <laughs> really badly. Uh, but you know what? We invite people, we invite people, and people just, you know, haven't decided to show up yet. No, so they're, that's they're afraid. Their cho well, whatever reason. No, yes, people are afraid of church. Yes, no, I agree. Well, well they want to hide, basically. <laughs> yes, we're going to actually going to talk about that. Because if you want to be a part of Higher Place Church, then, you know, uh, please don't hide anymore, you know. Um, <laughs> so how to be a part of Higher Place Church online, very quickly. Um, First of all, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but encouraging one another or exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day, what day that is, is the day of Christ. Jesus is coming, approaching. Okay, so we need, guys, we need each other. We oh, need Lord. each other. So true. I mean, my goodness, if we could just have, it, it just, I, I'm like, God has just told me, like, if we could just have an army of believers, and it doesn't have to be a big army. Nope. It can be a small army. Jesus um, had twelve. <laughs> yes, a remnant, a remnant. We believe in the remnant church. Um, you know, just and, and we do. We we have some people, um, but they are but they are not here in in Tennessee. They are out of state. Correct. Um, so anyway, they they are a part of Higher Place Church Online. They pray for us. We pray for them. And, um, you know, we pray, we pray almost every single night. Mm -hmm. So, guys, we can put you on our, on our prayer list. You know what I'm saying? Sure. When we come together and we pray, we can lift you up, mm -hmm. you know? So that's one of the things that we do here at, at Higher Place Church. All right, so number one, to be a part of Higher Place Church Online, watch regularly. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, watch regularly. That's not that's not too difficult to do. If you've missed the message on Facebook, uh, you can go to YouTube. So, mm-hmm. or you can go to higherplacechurch.com, and all of our messages are there. So, Acts seven forty seven forty eight said, "But Solomon built him a house, built God a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands." This is what we have to remember in this day and age: mm-hmm. that just because you uh, walk into a beautiful building doesn't necessarily mean that God is there okay right so so the the most high dwells within uh the praises of his people Mm -hmm. we are the church the people we are the church so it doesn't matter where we gather whether if it's in a home or in a starbucks or in 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 a beautiful building it doesn't matter as long as we're all uh going towards the same purpose in seeking god and encouraging one another and um in the word of god so number two, keep in touch regularly. And so that's something that we, uh, that was, uh, it's all, all of us, it's, it's difficult to do. Mm-hmm. Even when we go, yeah. when we congregate among each other, mm-hmm. okay, physically, it, that's hard to do. It's hard to keep in touch regularly with people. People are so busy. All of us are so busy, and we, we get that. Um, but Colossians 2, 5 says, for though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit. So even though... We're absent, uh, uh, you may be from, you know, physically, from people's lives, we are with you in spirit, okay? We're with you in spirit, we're rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness, steadfastness of your faith in Christ, okay? So we can come together in the spirit. That's what this is saying here. That's what Colossians is saying here. So keep in touch regularly. And and Angelo, I mean, you you are amazing doing that. You are a very much a people person. I love people. And I know you do. I, I know. You absolutely I tell do. my customers you don't, you don't yeah, try to put it on or anything like that. That's just who you are. So uh, number three, <clears> and this is the last thing, just be willing to be held accountable. And I think this is the hardest thing. Whether, whether people come together in a building, whether people, whatever, online, it doesn't matter. People don't want to be held accountable. This, con- this conversation is getting boring. Yeah, this conversation is getting boring. Uh, we yeah. need to get rid of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's an inside joke. Uh, <laughs> one of our children, when, when, when we start getting on them about things, she goes, oh, this, this conversation is really boring. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow. Wonder why. <laughs> I mean, you know, we only say things to <laughs> to help, love, yeah, to love you, and love to you, and to you. care about your life, and to make you can better your life. I know. You know. But anyway. Yeah. But, we love, but we anyway. Love her to pieces. Anyway. Be willing to be held right. She, you know, they need to. Children need to be willing to help. Be held if accountable. If you know my children, they have a bomb. They have a bomb. <laughs> Right. They are amazing. They One Corinthians totally four fourteen. Um, I'm not gonna read this whole thing. It says, "I write these things not to shame you, but but as my beloved children, I warn you." So Paul is talking to uh, uh, I think he's talking to Timothy to, you. to Timothy here, and um, he's saying, "I'm not saying these things to shame you. Right. I'm saying these things to warn you." Hello. God, Jesus warned us because He loved us. So this is why we should be willing. Yeah, to be yeah. held accountable, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, accountable. in our lives, and we and exactly and we are accountable as well. We have a, a bishop and we have an overseer who we of love and church. cares for us, mm-hmm. and you know, and then really the 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 ultimate authority is Christ Jesus. Absolutely, and, and you know what we know, you know that we have to be obedient to the Father at all. Yes. Cost. Yes, Proverbs twenty seven seventeen <laughs> says, "Iron sharpens iron. Mm. Iron sharpens iron." So that's this really important. Right. It's really important that we um, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves. And and again, that can be anywhere. Um, and uh, it just so happens, you know, we're doing this online right now. So so anyway, we just want to let you know how you can be a part. Please check out higherplacechurch.com. Okay, if you want a little bit more about our ministry, um, you can see the past messages. Also, you can donate there. God puts that in your heart to donate. You can go to higherplacechurch.com and donate. And also, if you're interested in the music, you can go to angeloandveronica.com. Guys, that will help us out tremendously. So we thank you, thank you, thank you in advance for your support. Yeah, people are so kind. You know, Veronica, with this... 
couple of ministries I'd like, I, I'd just like to encourage too is EX Ministries, Pastor Craig Lewis uh, out of Texas. He does a great work for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also under construction, Tiffany Stewart, who does an amazing, amazing job out there in Georgia. There are others, there are great ministries out there. You just have to find them. You have to, you really have to cry out for discernment. Ask God to show you, you know, those that are teaching truth, that are giving you, giving you the truth as, as the word of God says it is. Because Jesus is the truth. You want the truth? Go after Jesus. But you know, today uh, is, is Ephesians 5. What's in darkness will come. What did they put? No, no, no. That's not, that's not right. No, Ephesians 5, 11 is do not partake in unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it. Okay? This message today is not for those who are looking for a nice little Bible story. But for those who want to see what's happening in our world, see that the thing about our church here, Veronica, is that we can we're a free church, so that we we're, we're free to preach the gospel and truth because it's important for people to know that because a lot of people think you know when they go to churches that are under these uh, government rules, five hundred one c three, what's going to happen is they can't preach what we preach. They can't. They will be told they will be shut down. They have to turn in their messages. There's going to come a day. You watch. You you heard it first. It will come a day when that local church that you love so much with the thousands of people in it will be closed. All of a sudden, it'll just wait. What happened? I'm telling you guys, we got to open our eyes to the truth. But for those who want to see what's happening in our world, that's really what. What I want to talk about today. Here at Higher Place Church, we want to inform those who may not know what is going on in the world today that is crippling the ability to witness the gospel of Jesus Christ in spirit and truth because of all the deception that is all around us. Because all the foolishness that's being preached and, 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 the, and then people are running away from church. People are you know, running away from God because of the imposters that are all around us. And they blame the imposters for turning away from God. But you can't blame God because he warned you if you just read your Bible, yeah. like Big A says. Come on, man. But I hope this message will open your eyes to all the lies and deception that lies all around us and exposing the works of darkness as instructed in the word of God. And how some so-called ministers use fancy words to deceitfully steal and lie to get ahead in the world. Especially those, Veronica, yeah. in the entertainment world. <laughs> Football, basketball, foot, you know, all those, you know, I took my, my Tom Brady shirt and I'm going to dismantle it into pieces. He can put it into his little ritual he does to see what happens, you know. But I hope people stop watching Tom Brady. Good for you. I hope they stop watching that nonsense because now he, he exposed how he got successful That's right. by witchcraft. Through witchcraft. Through witchcraft. His wife is a witch. And he said it on the video yep, coming out of his mouth. It and it's funny because, you know, they have deflate gate, they have spy gate. Now they have sex gate. Okay? Because. Because that's a, their owner, Robert Kraft, a multi-billionaire, a billionaire, soliciting prostitutes. Billionaire. Really? Guys, it's time to stop the stupid. Stop it. That should be the slogan for the United States. Stop the stupid. Stop lifting up these people exalting them above God. And, and I'm telling you, especially <laughs> the entertainment world whose agenda is not to live Jesus, but to destroy Christianity, Veronica. That's what, that's what the enemy's trying to do. Yeah. Destroy Christianity. Right. Oh, He's right. trying to, mm -hmm. to offend those who call themselves believers mm -hmm. so they run away from God mm -hmm. and run away and run to him. 
Because see, if you run away from God, you're running straight to the enemy. There's no other way to go, see? You can either go that way or you can go that way. You can go the righteous way, you can go the wrong way. Which way do you want to go, guys? You know, and I have this conversation with people and they don't, oh, I don't believe in heaven or hell. I just believe that I just, I just sh my mind shuts off and that's the end of it. <laughs> well, then why would you want to live tomorrow? I can shut off. Why would you even want to live another day? If that's what you believe, it's, it, I mean, it, there's, no, there's, there's no hope for the future. There's no hope for your destiny. There's no hope for anything that, that God intended you for you to have. You threw it away on a dumb belief, on a belief that has no evidence, no proof. Go read, like, like Big, A, Big A says, don't you read your Bible? He's an eight-year-old. Guys, eight-year-old tells people, don't you read your Bible? Amen. He studies the Bible, eight years old. Amen. I praise God for you, brother. Yes, parents. First of all, Veronica, and for those who think I'm a hater, I preached it last week about haters, and I actually got a chance to tell some of my customers in the, in the car that, oh, you know what a hater is? You know, hater, the, the ones that call people haters are the actual bigots. They're the ones that are the, the ones that are the haters, if you will, because of a difference of opinion. Because I don't agree with your homosexual lifestyle, now I'm a hater. Well, it's my opinion, and I happen to align my opinions. See, what I do, guys, is I take the word of God, and I line up my opinions with God's opinions. Because if you line your opinions up with God's opinions, you're always going to be right. Just. See? Yes. But if you line yourself up with the enemy or the world's opinion, you're being lied to. <laughs> and all liars go to hell. Anyway, first of all, those who think I'm hating on recording artists or entertainers, the likes of a, excuse me, Kurt Franklin or Freddie Hammond. For example, I'm not. I know them personally, Veronica. And those who are watching, I know these guys, okay? And only want to expose the works of darkness. Unfortunately, these so-called ministers are lied to. Now, knowing that this, you can continue to be lied to, or you can, as Jesus quoted in Luke 13, 3, repent or likewise perish. Kirk is a very nice guy. And Fred Hammond, we've known, what, Fred for 27 years, Veronica? We've not only known Fred, we've worked with him in many projects. For, and, and we worked, worked, you know, we worked with Kurt Franklin on the road. We actually went on a short tour with him in the late 90s. In fact, he started out when we started out back in the early 90s, okay? This is not about tearing Kirk Franklin or Fred Hammond to shreds or to pieces. It's not. It's not. But you have, to do, you have to determine what is real and what is not real. See, there's a reality and there's a, there's a reality show. See, just the other morning, Veronica, I was listening to the secular radio, that Steve Harvey morning show, and, he, and his special guest was none other than one of his closest friends, Sunday's best creator, the one and only gospel sensation. I'm speaking none other than Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin prayers. Well, for starters, they spent 15 minutes of airtime kissing each other and encouraging one another, not in the faith, but in the fake. You say, what do you mean in the fake? No Jesus. No Jesus, fake. Jesus, real. No Jesus, fake. Either you are with Christ or you're against him. You can't have two masters. You can serve, you can't serve two masters. You have, you'll love one or hate the other. Then Kirk made a statement of what, believe, what he believes God himself has called him to. I, I heard right out of his mouth. He says, Kirk said, well, said, he's bringing the light into darkness. 
Because that's my calling, man. My calling, that's my calling. That's, that's what I'm called to do on earth. Okay? Rather than Jesus is bringing darkness into light, as Veronica said, as you shared with me. And uh, it's it really the scripture, Ephesians 5.11, you know, exposing the works of darkness. See, that sounds real good to those who don't know the gospel. <laughs> Unfortunately, his idea of what God's calling him to is very, very weak people. God has more for Kirk and his family. Mm -hmm. God has more for you, brother. Yeah, he has more for you, Fred Hammond. Yes. He's got more for you, John P. Key. He's got more for you, my brothers and sisters out there. He's got more for you. Mm -hmm. But you have to obey God. You have, to be, you have to be in his word. You have to be living a gospel lifestyle. What's a gospel lifestyle? The word of God. Living the way the word tells you to live. Come on, guys. Unfortunately, his idea of what it's called, again, God has more for Kirk. He, has, he just has to seek God and not the world for his approval. John 15, 4, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me, Jesus said, right? I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Stellas and st whatever they are, Grammys or whatever, uh, those are, that's not fruit. That's man's accolades. Okay? For without me, you can do nothing. I love that, what she said. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I abide in him bears much fruit. For without me, without Christ, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in Christ, he has cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you, Veronica. Your healing will be done for you. Because you abide in his word. You're abiding in Christ. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciples. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to disciple folks and teach them the way to Christ, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Not getting my acceptance from Steve Harvey or the Stellas or the Grammys or the Oscars. I think the Oscars are on sometime. It's a bunch of paid advertisement. Mm. That's Basically, what the people do is the record companies pay this money. So, and, and, and BET is famous. I mean, they got an award show every week. These guys are being lifted up every week. The Stellas, same people being lifted up every year. And I love what they have. I love what they have the Stellas right in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Praise the Lord. It'd be great if they were ministering the gospel, but they're not. You just watch some of the YouTube videos. Watch them on the red carpet as they glorify each other and kiss each other you know, and, and lift each other up. Instead of lifting up Christ, they're lifting up men. John 8, 31, the truth shall make you free. If you abide in my word, I abide in you. And then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Kirk, are you a disciple? Or are you a star? See, I'm gonna, I'm, I can only talk about me at this point. Because I remember when Veronica and I were new in the gospel industry, I got a little caught up. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I'm Veronica. If you, anybody knows Veronica, she don't play. She does not play. Now, Angelo, on the other hand, was weak. Weak Christian. It's all as simple as that. I was pathetic. I was, I was lukewarm. I loved God. I knew, I knew, there was, you know, I knew 
about God, Veronica? And I sang for God, which I thought I was doing. Oh, I, oh I'm doing this for you, Lord. I'm, I'm in concert singing for people. And we're being invited to churches, and I'm singing for people. And Yeah. Wait a minute. Excuse me, Angelo. Why don't you move aside so there's room for Christ? The problem is, is a lot of these guys, are so, their heads are so swelled up and their names are so big in lights that they're, they have so many Grammys that they can't share their Grammys with Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry, Veronica. Veronica, I was discussing how we could understand what he was saying because we were part of all that impostery. That's my new word, impostery. You like that one? Not part of the ministry. It's a good. It's a good thought, but but very deceptive. Veronica said, "Darkness is all around us, and the light of God's word is what Kirk is alluding to. No darkness will be brought into the light, not light into the darkness. In other words, yes, Kirk, your life will be brought into the light, because what's in darkness will come to light. So." The foolishness that's going on in, in the, and I don't mean to pick just on Kirk. I'm talking about the whole gospel industry. Because it's really supported by homosexuality, sexual sin, adultery, and nobody cares. Nobody talks about that. All they're talking about is their latest hit on the radio. Fraternities and sororities. Fraternities and sororities, correct. And if you're not part of the fraternity and sorority, you ain't getting no play in the radio. You're not going to get any awards. You're not going to get any accolades. You're not going to be recognized with, along these other fraternity and sorority endorsements. Serious stuff, guys. It's real. It's, it, it, you know, it's a good. Why well, aren't you, aren't you kind of like a conspiracy theorist? You know, you, have you read your Bible? The Bible's full of conspiracies. Full of them. Anyway, let me move on here because, oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. He states, Kirk, your life will be brought into the light. He states that if you want to be on his hit television show, uh, they right there should tell you that this is not God. Wants to be on the hit television show, Gospel's Best, and be a contestant to become a gospel sensation, come and try out. Really? A gospel sensation. Well, the biggest artist that he had on his show was thrown in jail for 30 days for alcoholism. Okay, and, and he's been living this reckless love, love, I mean life, and nobody cares because she got a, a beautiful instrument. She got a great instrument. Okay, uh, because we're caught up in the music. Give me my music. All that matters is my music. It doesn't matter about the gospel as long as you make me feel good. See, the music makes me feel good. You better check that one. You better check your feelings. My God, and unfortunately the gospel some will experience is what they watch on the boob tube. These people will not even crack open the Bible to study it for themselves, this is extremely dangerous. What measures success to God, I believe more than singing or laboring in the gospel, God wants us to be an example of Christianity on this earth so that some may be saved. I've told a lot of gospel recording stars that singing or writing or producing, touring gospel recordings, making gospel records, don't make you a Christian. You're talented, but it doesn't make you a Christian. It doesn't confirm that you're a Christian. God wants you to prosper just as your soul prospers, but not to be lifted as an idol, or as the word calls them, stars. Veronica, you know, you've heard of the, the like the like the, the walk of fame. I call it the Hollywood walk of shame. That's what I call it. These folks are looking for acceptance of man 
not God. You never hear them. I, I've, I've seen gospel people. They never mention Jesus. They mention who, who got the star on the ground. And then, you know, when the big earthquake comes, it, those, what's going to happen to the stars on the ground, Veronica? My goodness. John 12, 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. That's a very dangerous place to be as an artist, as a singer. You're looking for the yeah. acceptance yeah. of the world, right. but you're not looking to please the Father. <laughs> very dangerous. Galatians 1.10, for do I now persuade men of God, or God, or do I seek to, pl to please men? For if, if it still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Every time you see a lot of these artists, Veronica, you see them all at the award shows that create idol worship. Not the worship of God, but the worship of men. What a shame. Idolatry. Let's look at that for a second, guys. Idolatry. Now, plural, idolatries. The worship of idols. Idol worship. Idolatism, fetish, fetish, fetishism, um, icon worship, heathenism, Hers Hershey sacrilege, ungodliness. Jeremiah preached against idolatry. Idolatry, image worship, or divine honor paid to any created object. Paul describes the origin of adultery in Romans 1, 21 through 25. Men forsook God and sank into ignorance and moral corruption. The forms of idolatry are fetishism or the worship of trees, rivers, hills, stones, etc. Nature worship, the worship of the sun, the moon, the moon, and stars as the, as the supposed powers of nature. Hero worship, the worship of deceased ancestors or of heroes in, in scripture. Idolatry is regarded as of heathen origin. Let me read that again. In scripture, idolatry is regarded as of heathen origin and is being imported among the Hebrews through contact with the heathen, heathen, heathen nations. Wow, idolatry. That's the gospel industry. They are side by side. King David said, blessed are men who walk it not in the counsel of the ungodly. And what do we do? In the recording industry, we walk hand in hand with the devil and think we're not going to get burned. We walk hand in hand with these record executives who don't even know Christ, who are Christless, who are scoffers, and we don't even care. We just walk in and go, well, as long as I get what I need to get, I need, I need people to know my name. Because well, it's all about your name. It's not about Jesus. What did God say in his word? Let's read it together. Exodus 21. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God and who brought you out of the land of Egypt, Veronica, out of the house of bondage. Okay? Yes. You shall have no other gods before me. Amen. You shall, have, you shall not make yourself a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. <laughs> Guys, think about that for a second. What are we doing? You see like the Catholic little trinkets? You know, they carve what they say Jesus looks like. He's, he's got blue eyes and blonde hair. Even though he was a Jew from, from you know, Bethlehem, he was... You know, he was not white, nor was he African American. Sorry, guys. He was Jew. Foolishness.
But that's how the world is. The world wants to. And furthermore, the color of Jesus doesn't even matter. Yeah. What Jesus looks like don't even matter because you can't even look at him. That's right. Because if you did, you'd be blind. That's right. By how powerful he is. Yeah, that's right. My God. Yeah. My God, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stop the stupid. Even when it comes to that kind of foolishness. It's foolishness. It's foolishness to exalt. You know, I, they say, well, give honor where honor is due. Yeah, give honor where honor is due. Do not, don't, don't, don't take it out of context. I'm not lifting these men up. You know what? I'm praying that they'll get saved. I'm praying that they'll repent or likewise perish. That's my desire. My desire for my friends or my friends from the past were that they would get right with God. But unfortunately, I don't see that change. I say, well, you're judging. No, no. You'll know them by their fruit, the Bible says. What fruit are they bearing? Well, they got a television show. That's fruit. My God. My God, my God, my God. At the end of it all, you know what? And finally, at the end of it all, Mark 836, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? At the end of it all, they want money and fame. And they think money will make them happy. And that money will satisfy them. What does God say about that? Well, let's go to 1 Peter 5, 2 where he talks about feeding the sheep and shepherding the flock. Let's read 1 Peter 5, 1. The elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am a follower, el fellow elder, elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. You see, the glory that will be, be revealed is the glory of our next big hit on the radio so that my name could be exalted above Jesus, or not above Jesus, but alongside of him. You know what I'm saying? We, we could, you know, he's, you know, he's my brother. I mean, I heard Kirk say, the man upstairs, man, he, he's, that's my brother. He's your brother. He's not your brother. Oh my God. In the way that you, it's being spoken, guys, please, Listen to what the, what's coming out of these guys' mouths. Listen to it. Go on YouTube and listen to it out of their mouths. Not out of mine. Go and do your own research. I've done mine. Okay? Not only that, I know these people personally. They want nothing to do with me. They're afraid. They're afraid that I might, you know, I don't know what they're afraid of. I mean, I love them. What would I, what would I mean, I just want to tell them the truth. I wouldn't want to hurt anybody. My God, it, it makes no sense. <laughs> My God, you know, Peter, first Peter is talking about here, shepherd the flock, the God among your servants of overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain. My God, dishonest, you know, right here in Proverbs 13, 11, dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money, little by little makes it grow. It's amazing, you know, a lot of this money comes real fast. An inheritance gained hastily will not prosper right. in the Lost end. In the, end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. the wealth is much better acquired slowly. This is not to say that the wealth cannot be acquired quickly. It can be. Some examples are winning the lottery. Hello? Have you ever heard this, I mean, this is, it's not, it's not me, but all, I mean, you can just Google it. Most people that win the lottery are worse off with all the money than when they had nothing. Their lives are a shattered, tr shattered mess. Not everybody, but there, there, are, there are some that are definitely have been proven that. Picking the right slot machine at the casino. I mean, I remember my mother told me, she was like, I go, Ma, why are you going to the casino? She goes, I'm going to take back what the devil stole. <laughs> I go, you're going into the devil's den. Yeah. 
It's his money. So you got to put a dollar in and pull the thing. And, and it's funny because her friend won $100,000 twice with my mother. She never gave, never gave my mother $5. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. But they shouldn't have been there at all. My mother should not have been there. And I, and I, and I told her that. But anyway. But an inheritance, yeah, an inheritance in Proverbs 20, 21. An inheritance gained hastily at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. Whew. These are examples of how to spot an imposter. God's world is very clear. Word is very clear. It shows and exposes all the fake and the sinister throughout the world. I love it. It's in Proverbs 2, 3 through 6. Yes. If you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. That's God's word. Very clear. Again, the fame and fortunes of this world. You got to be careful what you're entertaining into your world, into your music, into your ear gate. And faith cometh by hearing. Romans ten seventeen. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if you're speaking the word of God, you're hearing it, and you're getting that. But if you put garbage in, and you think, oh, that, that song's anointed. What's anointed about it? It made me feel good. It's not about a feeling. The anointing of God is not a feeling. You're, 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 you're diminishing Jesus Christ to an emotion. It's not an emotion, people. It should change. If the anointing hits you, you should experience change in your physical being, your mental being, your well-being, any other being. It should change every aspect of what you think. Your thought life should change. That's the anointing, the power of God that comes into you. Okay, now, it's, you know, I, I struggle with this, it's like, well, what music do we listen to? Pray, ask God. Sometimes we have to take what's in our iTunes and just throw it away and get rid of it because yes. it's not lifting Christ. It's not the praise and worship genre, which I, I, I heard this guy on the radio today. He's, he's three wives, 15 kids, adultery, and being lifted, and people calling, oh, I love you, I love you, Pastor. I, that's a stupid I'm talking about. Stop it. Stop lifting up these homosexual gospel singers and saying it's okay. You know what you need to do for them? Pray for them. Pray they get healed. Pray they get delivered. And you'll know them by their fruit. But when you don't see, if, you're, if you see like a guy who's homosexual and he's never around a woman for 15 years, there's something wrong. Come on, guys. Or... A guy, you see a guy and he says, oh, not, you know, I've been delivered. And he's wearing this fruity jacket with sparkles and, and, and little soft little slippers for shoes and tight jeans. Really? I guess, the, I guess I'm old. I guess, you know, 60 years old. You, 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 you know, I just thought about my father as a man figure, for example. I never saw my father in some feminine outfit. I never saw him emasculized by what's going on in this world. He, he didn't change. He, it wasn't about being macho. No, it wasn't about that. It was about being a man. And he was a man married to a woman. And that's the example that I saw growing up. And I'm not, I'm not bragging. I mean, I, I feel bad for some guys who have not experienced that. Anyway, that would get off the rabbit trail. But I'm going to tell you something, guys. Seek after Jesus. Abide in his word so he can abide in you. Abide in his word. Read his word. Study his word. Seek his word. Seek his faith. 
He said, he says, day and night, meditate on my word day and night. We don't meditate on his word once a month. But we listen to our gospel singing. The gospel show in the morning on, on Steve Hunter, what is it, on 92Q or whatever the radio stations are. And these guys are not living the gospel. But we listen and we embrace their music. And we create idols. Idol worship. That's dangerous, people. Don't idol me. Don't idol Veronica. Don't idol nobody. Don't idol whoever. Stevie Wonder, don't, don't lift these people up. They're just people. You can appreciate what somebody does, and that's fine. Yeah, I love that. I like that stuff, you know. But don't lift them up. I tell people all the time, you lift me up, you're going to get a hernia. Okay? Lift up Jesus. His burden is easy. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Lift up Jesus. That's all I'm telling you for today. If you got anything out of this today, lift up Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. Be in relationship with Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something. Your life will change. You say, oh, Angel, I don't see nothing. No, you got to be, you got to be after God. You have to be steadfast. You can't just be wishy-washy and go, I mean, think about it. It's like, if, if I didn't chase my wife down, I wouldn't be married to her. Look at me and look at her. My God. I mean, talk about marrying it up. I married way up, but I chased her down. Okay? Her family's not happy about it, but it doesn't matter. I, I mean, I love her with everything that's in me. You know, it's amazing, Veronica, the Valentine's Day, nobody even called us to, to, to say, come, come, how did you stay married for 26 years? Going on 27 in April. How in the world did you stay married? Guys, go after God. Go after Christ. Father God, I just thank you. I lift up my brothers, Kirk, Fred Hammond, all those in the, in the gospel industry. I pray that they have a, a revelation and understanding of your word that will change them and transform them into what you called them to do, not what the industry has called them to do. So I pray for their souls. I pray, Father God, that they will be saved and go to heaven. And Father God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. God bless you.